likelihood of anybody hitting the truck. you guys FSC speed shop just woke up this morning we're over here on the northbound side of 83 interstate 83 just coming out of uh, Maryland going into Pennsylvania today we're gonna pick up a load a little south of Harrisburg Pennsylvania and take that back to Wisconsin today is election day for our nation here in the United States and uh, I need to be home reasonably quick because as it's looking we're gonna have a lot of problems so I don't see any truck in this week for me I'm just not crazy enough to drive around in cities that are, you know, mostly peacefully protesting. Meanwhile, when the whole place burns down. Anyway, with that being said, let me go ahead and introduce you to Orwell. If you're brand new to the channel, you're not going to know who the hell Orwell is. Orwell's right there. This is Orwell. Orwell is a 1984 Peterbilt 362 cab over. George Orwell wrote the book 1984. Peterbilt built the truck. You can put two and two together, figure out. Orwell, there you go. Orwell is powered by a 3406B Caterpillar engine, 13-speed transmission. If you don't recognize it, it used to be a keen truck back in the day out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. That was back then. Nowadays, it works for me. With that being said, obviously, you can tell I already woke up a little bit. Fired it up, got some heat in it. A little bit of heat, not much. It's uh, fall this time of year, although it feels like winter in some places. And no, I'm not a big fan of the cold, so that's just the way it is. Either way, it is a beautiful morning. The trees look completely dead, although over there there's still some color, some foliage left. It's that pretty time of year to fall. Ooh, look at that. Squirrel, straight pipe Peterbilt. Can't help but hear them coming. All right, enough of me yapping. Let's go ahead and figure out how to make today's video worth watching. All right, let's go. Push them in. That's what I mean, push them in. Brake knobs. Time to go trucking. Real 
bit. That could be interesting.
how close it is now. We can get the collars on. This way with the big hole rides the trailer lower. The hole is elongated longer. This way it's higher eyed. Since we're not, we don't have, since we don't have a tall load, we're gonna leave it on high ride. Now we've closed that gap. I'll watch when I get underneath it. underneath the main carriage for tie downs but it'll put a weird angle on a chain if I go under the carriage of the blade it'll lift it up I put it over it tries to lift up and I have to put it over the frame I don't really like that so we'll do like everybody else does on this one we'll just grab the cleats Have our really super duper heavy chain, which chain is heavy. Check, I might do it again Enemies close, have me thinking they're friends Ten toes down, I'll be free until the end Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my hands Took so many years, I've been swaying for the wins I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend If I do it once, I do it again Add it up, add it up. bankroll, bankroll. Euro. Euro, peso Now I'll point this out because I had a comment on a video with the skid steers about not tying down the buckets on the skid steer. But I 
tie this unit down, I'm holding it by its cleats and by the frame on the back. This part here is not supported or held down by anything. The skid steers, tying it down, you can see the different strap frames to hold this blade on the machine. And if it did, it's still on the trailer. However, I'm still required to tie the blade down as well. Everything is on me, gon' back it up